There are several implicit objects that are ready and just sitting there waiting for you to use them. This lesson shows you a couple of examples. The first one is the request object, which is an object that implements the servlet request interface. You can find out just about everything in the original request from the browser, but the main thing of interest are the parameters that are included on that URL line. This page shows you how one of the methods can be used to retrieve those parameters. There are other ways of retrieving the values. For example, you can have them returned as an array of strings. You can even retrieve a list of the names of the parameters. In this example, the two named parameters are returned to the program, and the program then uses out to display the values of those parameters. The resulting page looks like this if you don't provide any parameters tagged onto the end of the URL. You can add them and the page will show them. I'm sure you know the syntax. The start of the first parameter is signified by a question mark. And the separation between the two parameters is done with an ampersand. Now the parameters show up on the screen. Now remember, it was a Java program that read the PARMs and included them as part of the text of the web page when the web page was constructed. Here's what the page looks like that came back from the browser. If you wished, you could write the code to retrieve the parameters and store their values in a page-wide variable. This would make them available to be used in different sections of the Java code throughout the JSP page. I'll be showing you how to set up such variables here in just a bit. The response implicit object can be used to construct an entire or part of the page that you generate in the code. It's an instance of the HTTP servlet response class. Here you can see that one of the methods, the one that reports an error, has been called to generate the response. Normally you would do this inside of an if condition after making some test that determines whether an error has indeed occurred. This page always just reports the error. Here is what the error page looks like as it's coming back from the server. When you look at the documentation of the HTTP servlet response class, you'll see where all the error codes are defined. The error code number is specified at the top of this page, and the error message that I included is shown at the top and in the body of the page. You can send an error message with or without sending the message string. And it isn't just error responses. You can use the same object to add headers, date information, send responses that will set cookies, and even redirect the browser to another site. You could, of course, write all of these yourself in Java, but they've already been written for you and they're ready for you to use.